supposed to be 98 degrees and we're already both sweating <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah right here yeah no 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 we went to point she's sweating a lot <laughs> we're both sweating <laughs> wet point yes what is a wet point yes point <laughs> 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 Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am here with my friend Kyo again. You might have seen her in a video from before where we hiked the mountain here in Nagoya. Uh, big shout out to my man Ray. He put that intro music together that you heard and I forgot to thank him in the last couple videos that I did. So if you enjoyed that music, please leave a comment down below. Uh, we are west of Nagoya by about 45 minutes at Gozaisho Ropeway. So let's check it out. Those guys are the ones that deserve the big money. Hey, we are here at Mount Kozai Show. Hey, this is my friend Kiyo. Hi. We are going to the top and we're going to check out the trails there. Hopefully there's something cool at the, at the top. I don't know because uh, it looks like it's going to be for families and just like a <laughs> nature trail. But um, you can see there's pretty steep terrain around here. So we might find something. All right. We'll check back in later. So the illusion of a family nature trail type park uh, was definitely put on from the get go because, uh, you know, you see all the families and kids walking around and, you know, moms with the strollers. Uh, but this mountain quickly told us that it has more uh, to desire. Uh, if you just get off that nature trail. So we found this rockway after looking at the park map and we figured, okay, this and uh, also using the All Trails app, actually, no, I'll take that back. That one doesn't work that well with these mountains, uh, the map. We actually use Google, uh, the Google map to kind of uh, map out the trail. So you can see we got a little bit of a late start today. People are already hiking up the trail that we are hiking down. Uh, this is about 45 minutes from Nagoya City where I live um, to get to the ropeway. And the ropeway is a cool way to uh, get to the top and hike down back to your car. Or you can park uh, at the bottom, hike up and take the ropeway back. A round trip for the ropeway was about 2300 yen. That's about $20. Uh, or you can also just get a one-way ticket. It's cheaper. Right away on this hike, the scenery gets really nice. It changes so much from uh, riverbed rock to uh, very uh, creek bed style to uh, just a lot of trees. And it goes back and forth to uh, mountain tops to valleys uh, for you know hours. It's, it's very it's a very nice uh, scene as you're walking this trail. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you can see right here at the first four coming up that we took off thinking that we were heading to the west, but we were actually heading north. And at this first, uh, this first four-way uh, split, uh, instead of uh, heading west, uh, we ended up heading uh, more north than we wanted to. 
and uh, realized that we had to make the best of it by uh, making a north, east, and south loop back to the car park. Something Kawa. Yeah. Let's try. Rocks and more rocks. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is good. Good workout. So this path we took is uh, very intense. Uh, it went from uh, you know going downhill, uh, riverbed style trail to a very intense uphill. Uh, for roughly 45 minutes to an hour, we were climbing, and I uh, would not recommend this for beginners. It's more. Uh, you know, uh, moderate to to hard. I wouldn't say extreme, but uh, definitely moderate to hard. So if you're going to hike this, make sure you're hydrated. Plenty of water. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> Hiking shoes are recommended for this trail. Not necessarily boots, but uh, some type of hiking tread on uh, your shoes. My friend is wearing the uh, running sneakers. She slipped a couple of times, uh, but because of the loose sand, I, I would recommend uh, yeah, the, the, the hiking tread. We get to the top of this hour-long uh, uphill climb, and we are rewarded with a very beautiful view of Gozaisho Mountain. <laughs> Wow. Bitte. <laughs> So at this peak here, uh, we're looking back across over there where the ropeway uh, was, where we came from. And we climb around at the top here for a little while, take a break, drink a lot of water, have, uh, have some snacks. Uh, again, like after about an hour, hour and a half of, uh, of hiking, it's good to get high, make sure you're, you know, you're rehydrated. Uh, you stay evenly hydrated throughout the, the hike. We take back off, and this is where the uh, real fun actually begins. Uh, we start getting some uh, rope-assisted hills, uh, rope-assisted climbs. Um, some of the trails were just uh, pretty steep. It got really challenging. That's what we were looking for. Uh, that's what we came out here for. Now the fun was actually beginning. Uh, we were hitting some really high peaks, uh, looking back over at uh, Gozaisho Mountain, where uh, the ropeway uh, elevates to uh, actually uh, one fact about Gozaisho Mountain in the winter time uh, for a short period of time it's a ski uh, area a very small ski run so that way I figured that out about it when I was there looking at some of their brochures I might come back here in the winter maybe get a couple of runs on my snowboard uh, so we take off and we're heading more north close because we're gonna go north for about maybe 45 minutes to an hour and yeah. then cut over to the east and work our way back <sighs> towards uh, the car uh, southeast uh, towards the car and uh, so we can 
depart and finish the hike. Um, this terrain was 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 a lot of, was a lot of fun. It was very uh, you know flat, you know forged out trails for some parts of it. Some of it was just complete rocks. Some of it was completely almost like there was no trail, and uh, it was pretty cool. We ran into a gentleman here, Otani-san, Mr. Otani. He uh, he was a pretty cool What's dude. You? We talked to him for a little bit. Kuni, Kuni mi one, huh? Kuni mi has. Ah, Kuni mi. One. The gentleman we met there on the trail uh, was named uh, Otani-san, Mr. Otani. We uh, ran into him. Uh, actually, we, we actually run into him again later. Uh, we actually reunite on the trail uh, maybe four hours after uh, this moment here. Uh, interesting thing about this gentleman here was that uh, uh, he told us he was 77 years old and he's been hiking these same mountains for 60 years, uh, starting when he was age 17. So he was just telling us uh, the path that he was coming off of was the most dangerous and we were heading the right way if we were looking for a long hike. So uh, it was just a little bit afternoon. It wasn't as hot as we thought it was going to be because of the elevation. It was kind of cool. So we thought, hey, let's just go ahead and push on and get the most out of this day so we can get a really good workout. If you pay attention on most of the trail, you will notice there's a little red tape wrapped around some tree branches. Sometimes there's a little bit of red paint on a, a rock or a, uh, on the, you know, usually on a rock or red tape around a tree. I'm trying to think where else I've seen them. Sometimes they put a little red tape around a, a branch that's low to the ground. Uh, that's a big thing in Japan when you're hiking out here. Uh, let you know that you're on some type of maintained trail. I don't remember seeing that uh, when I was hiking back in California, um, not many trees there, but yeah, I just don't remember seeing like uh, red tape around anything uh, to let you know you're on a trail or not. Uh, but it, I've noticed that uh, when I was in Okinawa hiking out there, also hiking uh, up here on the mainland Japan. So just keep that in mind if you're ever hiking out here in Japan. Look for the red tape and it lets you know you're still on a trail. We were climbing again, soaking wet. We were hot, sweating. Uh, at this point, I started to reserve my water because I knew there was still quite a bit of ways to go. We get to another peak where it was a really good view, <laughs> looking across to the other mountain. We goof off here a little okay. bit, <laughs> drink a lot of water, take some photos, do our Instagram, whatever, whatever. And uh, after about 20 minutes or so of resting, much needed rest because this is about hour three into the hike we decided to push on we take off from there and most of it's maintained trail uh, we're, we're on like a ridge and we can see out at the uh, out to the other mountain uh, back we, we couldn't see Gozai show anymore but we can see other mountain peaks uh, we started getting into um, a valley uh, going down into a valley and it was it was interesting on this part because you know the whole scenery changed from this rocky uh, riverbed look. We were hiking down a valley, making our way towards an, uh, a river, the Mitaki River, and that river was going to take us uh, straight back down the mountain towards the uh, parking area where we parked our car. And uh, but first we had to hit the hotel that's right along the river. So. Enjoy this terrain. This terrain was, uh, it was beautiful scenery. It was um, challenging, disorienting at times. Um, you know, we stopped and had to read signs quite a bit. Thank goodness for my friend Kyo because she can read all the kanji. And uh, I was just using my Google 
app, but at certain some points uh, when we're out there, the Google app was just losing connectivity because uh, there was no internet on some parts. So, um, yeah, the signs the signs are definitely uh, appreciated. Uh, I'm glad they were there, and I'm glad I have my friend with me because she can read the kanji and, and make sure we were staying on track. And um, yeah, right here we actually did go the wrong way. Um, partially because of Google just being a, a little wonky at times. We actually went left and sh we should have went right. So this added another hour and a half onto the hike, which further exacerbated my water situation. My advice is if you're gonna hike uh, out here in Japan or any trail for that matter, make sure that uh, you do a better job than I did at planning out your course. Um, like really pull up the Google map and draw it out. Maybe even bring a, a paper copy of what it is that you want to do because at some point uh, Google does get a little weird and your uh, pinpoint uh, GPS thing has you somewhere uh, other than where you really are Far. and uh, it can put you on the wrong trail uh, which which sometimes uh, can add uh, <laughs> anywhere from you know half hour to an hour hour and a half to a hike and that cannot be good just depending on uh, your time that you're plan on spending on hiking, the amount of water supply you bought, the amount of snacks, the amount of energy you have. So, um, yeah, it could just get a little bit rough if you do not, um, if, if you do get misguided by your uh, your GPS on your phone. So, try to plan it out. Make sure you really, uh, you really, uh, you know, have a good, solid uh, course that you're going to take. The one thing I want to mention here is, man, the uh, flies uh, or the insects in this area were very tenacious, man. They were just trying to get in your face, flying right into your eyeballs. I'd recommend some type of net hat, a uh, netted hat, or I don't know if glasses would have worked. I could have put my sunglasses on. Uh, but yeah, or maybe some deep. But yeah, they were so tenacious that at some point I was just like exhausted. I'm trying to fight them away. I felt like... You know, I'm, I'm a kid in one of those Feed the World videos where I'm just like, I don't even want to fight him anymore. But, uh, yeah, we finally got to this hotel, and this was great. They had uh, fresh water there. Um, they had just, like, unlimited water supply, mountain water. Uh, we got to clean up, throw a bunch of cold water on us, refill our water bottles, and rest. And this is where we actually ran into... Mr. Otani again. Bottom. Um, Otani San was hanging out there. And uh, yeah, it was just one of those rare things. Four hours later, we run into the same gentleman on the trail that we ran into earlier. <laughs> While we were taking a break, uh, Otani mentioned his leg was hurting. Uh, he had been hiking for just as long as we had, and uh, I think he really enjoyed the company heading back to his car. He was heading the same way we were. And uh, this is the first time that's ever happened. Uh, took off with two and picked up one, and came back as a group of three. So um, it was pretty cool. Again, like I said, he's 77 years old. He said he's been hiking his mountain for 60 years. And uh, we didn't want to extend the trip any longer, so why not follow somebody who knew exactly every single uh, which way to go, and uh, there would be no more mistakes. And we would just get the uh, most direct, uh, quickest route back to the car. So we followed him keeping him company, chit-chatting a little bit about the mountain and uh, all kind of other stuff. It was pretty cool, uh, one and a half hours back from that hotel, uh, mountain hotel, back to the parking area, and uh, that's where we wrapped up the day. Thank you, it's good day. <laughs>
Well, that's about it, folks. We hike back to the car and we call it a day. Hey, I really appreciate you coming to the channel, watching the videos. If you're enjoying them, please subscribe, comment, like the video, share it with a friend and uh, help me out. Uh, it motivates me to uh, continue to uh, edit these and bring them to you. I'm always going to record them. I'm always going to go out there and hike. But, uh, you know, the time and effort put into actually producing the video. Uh, sometimes I wonder, is anybody enjoying this or not? So kind of let me know. It, it'll help me out and motivate me a little bit. So I uh, hope you all have a good day. I'll see you on the next video. Alexa. Oh, <laughs> Siri. <laughs> hey, Siri. <laughs>